Okay, bud, are you ready? I have no idea what I'm about to say, but you're gonna help me out, okay, Jay? Jay, you want your uh, you want your squirt gun? Squirt gun. It's March, folks, and uh, the warm weather has him ready for summer. He's got his squirt gun out. And uh, anyways, uh, how's it going, folks? My name's Josh. This is my little fishing partner, Jaden. And uh, right now, what I'm about to do is bring you some real basic tips and overview on ways that you can experience some awesome, awesome late ice ice fishing on the western part of Sakakawea. Um, if you're like me, you're probably antsy to get the boat in. However, uh, honestly, about the time that people start quitting ice fishing is the time that it gets insanely good. Whoa. And I'm just gonna give you a few basic tips, uh, just trying to keep it real basic so that you can get out and have some fun. Here we yeah. go, what do you guys think? So, first off, location. That's the most important thing out of anything. Uh, if you're not where the fish are, you're not going to catch them. Sounds dumb, but people tend to sweat things like colors, lure, lure type, etc. Ultimately, that's not that important if you're not on them. Um, when you're thinking of where you're going to start out fishing, <laughs> uh, a lot of times, like let's say you're out in the boat in the spring. A lot of times your spring hot spots may be really good late ice hot spots as well, or they might be awfully close uh, to those spots. Really good spots to start, and a lot of what I'm gonna reference is kind of from Newtown all the way to Williston, but I mean, this applies to things that I've seen uh, closer to bays off of Van Hook, etc. cetera. Um, Jay, don't, sh don't shoot dead, okay? Not, <laughs> not, don't shoot me, I know you're having fun. Shoot other things, okay. Uh, <laughs> Jay, don't point that at me. Yeah, you wanna, no! Oh, Jay, you got me, what? You silly boy. Oh, you silly boy. Okay. Anyways, so, life with a two-year-old. Ah. Uh, okay, so places to start. Places that you might fish in the spring or places not far from it. Places where the ice goes out soon. Places, uh, bays that have bigger tributaries uh, feeding them. The tributaries might not be that big, but if you look on a map, look at the bays, look at which ones. Jay, no, 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 that is silly, but don't do that again, Jay. Okay, point that at other things, okay? Uh, bays that have tributaries running into them tend to be really good. So, um, I may not be fishing the tributary itself, but I might focus on bays with larger trib, and I might fish primary or secondary points near the mouths or even partially into the bays, um, you know, to start my hunt. Uh, a dead giveaway this <laughs> Jay, don't shoot, the, don't shoot the camera, Jay. A dead giveaway this time of year, uh, a lot of times the shoreline ice will kind of disappear back on the shore a little bit, and you will notice, especially Daddy, on the western please. end, um, but I'm talking bays off and hook all over the place. Whoa, yeah. You will see tons of little emerald shiners right up against shore, um, particularly shorelines that have a little bit of cover in the form of rock, wood or weeds and uh here you go bud so as you're walking out if you are in a bay that you know is a good spring bay or you're on a channel swing that you know is good in the in the spring and as you're walking out you see little emerald shiners up against the shoreline all over you're probably in a really good area because <laughs> yeah Jay, i won't shoot you here you go along with the emerald shiners are cisco that are eating them uh, whitefish that are eating them, walleye that are eating them, crappie, catfish, pike, everything. Um, a lot of times the big pike might prefer the cisco that are eating them with shiners, but that's the start of the food chain. So keep your eye out as you're walking out on shore for that bait. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah bud, you're doing great. Um, so, location. So. Have we, have we got that figured out, Jay? Uh, Think of your spring hot spots. Yeah. Uh, think of channel swing banks. Channel swing banks are almost always no. good at all times of the year, no. but they're good this time of the year also. Please. And uh, KJ, I, I gotta throw out some tips quick. Um, and also, I just to throw out some numbers. I mean, honestly, day to day this is gonna change, but like 10 to 18 foot can be really good for walleyes on the west I'm end of the lake this time of year. And typically for it's pike, my best holes are actually probably seven foot okay, and shallow. Dad? If there's enough room for the pike to swim under the ice, they might be there. A lot of my best holes are really two, three, four foot of water. And that's whether I'm fishing points towards the outside of a bay, partially into the bay, or at times all the way back in, you know, at the very tail end of a, you know, very back end of a bay. 
Um, so, yeah. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the fish are moving and the fish are hungry this time of year. The, the days are getting longer. Uh, there's melt water getting back into the lake oxygenated i mean fish are getting ready to spawn it's go time fish are eating and there's not many people out there still ice fishing when you're here in the last few weeks of march so <laughs> buddy did you get wet i think he needs mommy to try off i'll be right back folks okay i got Jane dropped off with mom um so you pulled up to your favorite channel swing you like fishing in the spring or or whatever you just want to try it out or maybe you're fishing a bay you think is going to be good and you pull up by the by a point at the mouth of the bay or uh, partially into the bay it's got a really good drop and a nice little shelf on top as you're walking out you know it's bait on shore it looks good what are you going to do honestly i'm going to give you just a few basic lures i can tend to make it a lot more complicated than this at times but a super super fun way to catch tons and tons of fish is the smallest size Swedish pimple and all I pretty much use is an eighth ounce Swedish pimple in either white or chrome. If the water's pretty dirty or if it's low light I usually use white. If it's sunny or real clear I tend to use chrome. It emulates those little emerald shiners really well. You'll catch the snot out of everything that swims in Sakakui on these things. Cisco love them, whitefish love them, walleye love them, crappie, catfish, etc. Um, let's just say I'm set up on a point uh, you know near the mouth of a bay or something like that uh, I might be catching walleye and let's just say 10 to 18 foot of water uh, maybe it breaks and it starts you know the break the base of the break is let's just say in 25 foot at about that base of the break suspended just off bottom you'll tend to run into a lot of catfish on the west end of Sakakawea you'll run into crappie and also when the walleye are a little less active it can be a real good spot for walleye typically the most active fish I'm running into this time of year kind of that 10 to 18 foot range um, but like I said, a little 8th ounce um, Swedish pimple and honestly, this is a medium light Jason Mitchell, just an old school medium light Jason Mitchell ice rod, a little Tika Cetus reel, 4 pound trialing micro ice and you're set. I pinch off a minnow head and I put a little minnow head on there. I also like to use a small bait button to help keep that minnow head on for lots and lots of bites, lots and lots of fish. This time of year you can catch lots of walleye, lots of cisco, lots of whitefish. Let's just say I'm jigging in 15 foot of water. And it's, I've been catching walleye. A lot of times I like to do column climbs and work up and down the water column because I love catching Cisco also. They're fun, uh, you can smoke them. They're just a cool, fun fish to catch. It's like catching trout. So a lot of times if I'm bored fishing walleye or even if I'm not bored, I'll just work the whole column. A lot of times like three, four foot under the ice or anywhere to spin in the water column, the Cisco like to come through. If you see them high, it's more than likely it's a Cisco, possibly a whitefish, especially the Cisco. Um, but anyways, you get real wild with it. They love chewing these little spoons also. Not to mention get some surprise big pike on these also. So let's just say you're fishing this point um, and let's say the point gets real shallow. You might try putting some tip ups out for, oh, actually before I get to that, along with the jigging spoon, I will say this is about all you need. However, if you really want to put out dead sticks, my preference is not to really use tip ups because I think they're more of a pain to use and this time of year it, it's warm you don't really have to worry about stuff freezing in my preference is to use a little rod rocker like this and I will just set the rod in like this set it on the ice and then what I got here is a clam drop XL tungsten jig got about a size six hook on it and the jig weighs probably well it's tungsten it's probably at least eight ounce if not a little bit more it helps in the current to be small and compact so that if you're in an area like a channel swing that has a little bit more current it won't blow out as much but anyways these these dead sticks they have a really really soft tip and on that rod rocker you'll notice when a fish starts to grab it and pull it down and honestly they hang on it you run over there jack the hook set you got got yourself a walleye most days I will far out produce dead sticks with a jigging spoon. However, it does help to have dead sticks some days and there are days where dead sticks can definitely help put quite a few fish on the ice. So 28 inch Jason Mitchell, this is the, yeah, just his, his meat stick rod. It's an inexpensive, super nice rod. Four or six pound trialing micro ice, all you need. 
So let's just say you're set up on that point and while you're at it, you want to jack a big pike. Uh, big pike, you can get them way, way back in, in bays this time of year. However, they're honestly out to feed. So wherever the most food is, that's where they're going to be at. A lot of times those points, like I was just talking about, they might have emerald shiners, cisco, whitefish, I mean, walleye, everything that's out there. I mean, they would love to chew on a nice juicy cisco. So while you're at it, that same point, you could set up a tip up. Um, I like, personally, I've used a lot of various tip ups, etc. Day in, day out, I feel like, honestly, I've gone back to just the old school beaver dam is probably my favorite setup. I've used jaw jackers, round thermal tip ups, etc. Without going into a long explanation, this is currently what I'm leaning towards. Um, so anyways, beaver dam tip up. My preference is just a single treble hook. I keep it real basic. A single treble hook, um, I've been using mostly a size two owner ST41 treble with an eighth ounce bullet sinker just above it. That helps because usually when I'm, um, my favorite bait is just like a four to six inch smelt. I use a lot of different baits, cut baits, a lot of various things, but without making it complicated, day in, day out, a four to six inch smelt speared through the back with one tine of the treble hook with a bait button over that to help keep it on is going to catch pike and big pike um, to that i have about about a four foot long liter of 40 pound tieable american fishing wire it's a nylon coated wire i use a four turn clinch knot to cinch that down then to my tip up line with my tip up line i also like using an indicator to help set depths because sometimes when you get on a really hot bite for pike, it's nice to know where you're at really, really quick because a lot of times they bite in waves, you get one flag, you might have three up at the same time, you gotta go, 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 go. Additionally, I like to use a drill because when they spool out a bunch of line, I can hook up the drill right here and wind the line on real tight here so I can get back and grab the next tip up because when it's on, it's on. So anyway, so and this really helps get the line down even and packed in fairly taut so that it comes off good when the pike are running so they don't feel too much pressure. That would have took like 10 minutes by hand. So anyways, um, if I do use bigger baits, I use a, a two hook quick strike rig. However, honestly, um, I feel like the more hardware you put on there, the less likely they are to bite it. I've definitely seen that be the situation at times. A single treble hook like this 2X Strong Owner ST41 with cutting points is a killer hook. It'll stick big ones. Um, also, if you're fishing with little kids, it sets really nice. It's got cutting point hooks on there. It really jacks them. It's fairly small, but it's stout. You can land giants. Um, like I said, if you, if you want to get creative with like eight, 10 inch baits or bigger, you probably will want to use a, a, a double quick shark rig. Um, the ones that I've used the most are, they're called like zero rigs. Um, Big Tooth Tackle kind of came out with them. A few guys from that a handful of years ago. Uh, you can look that up online if you'd like. So, an extremely overlooked tactic for big pike. And pike all year is jigging for them. Uh, this right here is about a 40 inch Thorn Brothers professional blank kind of designed for Lakers, Big Pike, etc. Um, I got a 3000 size Daiwa on here. I've typically used, I'd recommend 10 to 20 pound suffix 832 mainline uh, braid. Suffix 832 mainline braid. Um, however, I am currently experimenting with 15 pound P-Line CX copolymer. Um, to that, I have a 20 pound tieable leader with a ball bearing swivel. Ball bearing swivels make a huge difference compared to just a generic crane swivel. Generic crane swivels are almost worthless. You have to get a high quality swivel like a Sampo or a Spro with solid welded rings, about two foot of wire down to a, it's either like considered like a 25 or 30 pound tactical angler clip. And if I had to pick one jig to catch big pike this time of year, a hair jig, specifically like this airplane jig. Reason being is because when you jig it, it jumps, it really glides side to side. Bucktail works really, really well in the cold. That side to side really helps trigger them. Jigging for pike is extremely underrated. Lakers are becoming extremely popular for good reason. 
But honestly, pike are like a poor man's laker. You can have insane strikes and insane fights from pike. The biggest difference is you're catching them shallow, so you don't necessarily see them chase for like 50, 60 foot, but it's sick. You want to have your drag so it can slip on the hook set because, man, those things will absolutely crush you, and you can get 20 plus pounders on the little rod, and it's insane. So, anyways, let me see what else I want to cover. Oh, that was a really quick and spontaneous take to try to get it in before sunset. You can probably hardly see me. I hope you can see a few things on video. I don't know what I forgot, but anyways. I'd encourage you to check it out. The fish are active, moving and grooving this time of the year. Uh, open water is coming fast, but honestly, it's an extremely good bite. If you don't have an ATV, I mean, the spots that I fit, you can walk. To, the spots this time of year, you can walk to extremely easy. Um, if it looks good, it probably is good. <laughs> if it's a good spring spot in open water, probably a good spring spot now. Um, look for bait, jig actively. Have a good time. Um, I think that's it. What else I want to say? So it's March. Um, I do offer some guide trips. Uh, if you're interested in a trip specifically for bass or pike or walleye on Sakakawea during May or June, I'd probably get a hold of me right now. I do have a few options available. Um, I do. I offer walleye. Um, I'd say I definitely specialize in casting artificials for bass and pike, though. Um, including on the fly. So if you're interested in chasing, I mean, just about anything that swims on Sakakawea, especially bass and pike with artificials and casting, give me a call. Um, leave my website and hope you guys get out at late ice. It's a blast. It's super fun. You can get a suntan, catch big fish, and get ready to go for uh, getting warmed up for open water. Catch you later, guys.